the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Let me also use this opportunity to truly, truly from the depth of my heart, honor the veterans of the gospel scattered within the plateau. I'm aware that there are men and women who have labored like Reverend Akila shared. I think we have come to a level of maturity in the body of Christ where we must sustain the discernment and the unashamedness to acknowledge and celebrate the corporate investment of the body of Christ. The days of superstar Christianity are over. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. We, thank you, thank you. We may, truthfully speaking, we may differ in our levels of doctrinal accuracy. We may differ in our levels of encounter based on our hunger and personal pressing to the things of God. We may differ as far as the systems of mentorship and maturity that we have exposed ourselves to can provide. But one thing remains sure that we are a sincere people who love Jesus and will continue to do our best to see that within the time allotted for us here that his kingdom comes and his name be praised. Therefore, please everyone I like you from the depth of your heart with every sense of responsibility help me honor the servants of God all across the plateau go ahead some of them are your pastors don't stop some of them are your prophets whilst you sleep they are awake whilst you eat they fast whilst you smile they cry carrying the burden of the city most people have no idea of the attacks that come yeah thank you listen probably this may be the first lesson for us tonight corporately speaking and i'm glad that i'm not speaking with any any sense of prejudice or bias because this is my own place also but i will tell you this there is a plague upon the plateau that we need to correct beginning from tonight do not be ashamed to celebrate those who god bring out of this place who are changing the world in ministry in business drop tribal sentiments drop whatever it is listen there are many people who have risen from this soil and are doing great things. We must strangle away the spirit of resentment and sarcasm, sustain the maturity and the unashamedness to celebrate what we see God doing with our people all across the globe. This is a culture that has been used in other regions and it has helped to foster sustainability of influence if we ignore the art of honor and if we do not train our people now i'm not saying this for me god has been more than faithful to me it would be evil for me to demand any extra honor god has given me what many people may not get in many lifetimes and i am grateful but let me tell you this if we do not learn honor we will institutionalize disrespect for elders, for servants of God, for members of parliament, people in the government, and there will rise a generation that the language of honor and regard will be strange to. But in Jesus' name, we say, God forbid. Are we together? We must learn to honor the investment 
and the sacrifices of people and then for what is happening tonight i truly believe that this is already a prophetic message to the plateau that regardless the fact that we have numerous local governments regardless the fact that we have cultural differences we've had the antecedents of all kinds of divides but the church is spearheading the campaign for unity united we stand and it is true that divided we fall can we start tonight's meeting by praying a prayer for the plateau lift your voice in one minute and pray father we are still available this state is still available walk wonders in our midst raise a generation of men and women of fire are you praying is this how much you love the plateau pray those following online from whatever nation of the world permit our bias but would you lend your voice as we pray for the plateau northeast not central of nigeria Father, we pray, let families experience your visitation. Let every church represented on the plateau experience such a move of the Spirit. We pray for unity, unity that is stronger than our differences, unity that is stronger than our pain, unity that is stronger than any basis for divide. hallelujah praise the name of the lord one more prayer point and then we'll be seated we're going to pray for ourselves tonight and ask the lord to give us very exact and tangible visitations it is my personal conviction that at whatever spiritual level we find ourselves there is always room for more even in heaven John was told to come up hither. There is always space for more. Can we lift up our voices and cry to our maker and our God, our King and our Lord. Many of us will carry mantles tonight. Many of us will watch prophecy fulfilled tonight. We honor you, our King, our Lord. We come with hearts desperate. We come with hearts hungry. We come with every sense of meekness and expectation. Wonderful, merciful Savior. Precious Redeemer and Friend Who would have thought that a lamb could Rescue the souls of men Oh, you rescue the souls of men Help me with the chorus You are the one that we pray Father, tonight heal the sick. Tonight let the oppressed be delivered. More than what has happened in all the two days combined, give us very definite visitations. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Please be seated. God bless you. Let me encourage you, for those of you who I'm told there are hundreds of prayer requests already online, Please do well to keep sending them for as many who need to. And then for us who are here on ground, 
please be sure to send in your requests for yourselves and then your loved ones. If you're yet to pass across yours, I'm sure that there are um, officials around. You may do well to just wave your request, wave it high enough for them to see. Someone is moving around with a basket and there are people waving, please. Uh, ushers, let's do well. There are people in front. Can someone attend to them? So that we have the requests. Tonight, the Lord laid it in my heart to teach for a few minutes just to challenge our faith. And then we'll have the time to pray and allow the Holy Spirit again to glorify Jesus in this place. Tonight is a night of encounters. Tonight is a night of transformation by the word of God. Tonight is a night of supernatural visitations. Tonight is a night of miracles, signs, and wonders. Tonight is a night of unity. And then tonight is a night of impartation. This is the part that I want us to be very sensitive about because it starts right away. An impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. The possibilities of the kingdom are transferable. Virtues are transferable. Graces are transferable. And you know the kind, the dimension, and the level of grace that is upon you by the results that you command. And so I like for our hearts to be open with all meekness and humility to receive that which the Lord is doing. The God of miracles. I'm teaching tonight on the God of miracles. Psalm 72 and verse 18. Our God is a supernatural God. Our God is a miracle working God. It's a very important fact that I must stress. Our God is a supernatural God and our God is a miracle working God. I'd like you to read with me if you can see it projected. Psalm 72 and verse 18. Ready? Please read. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who only doeth wondrous things. The Bible lets us know that the God of Israel is a miracle worker. The God of Israel is a miracle worker. Let me again announce that the days of miracles are not over. No, God is still in the business of doing miracles. The days of miracles did not end with the book of Acts. It did not end with the early church. It did not end with the dispensation of the generals. It did not even end with our modern day patriarchs. As far as the history of the church and of Christianity is concerned in this nation. By the grace of God, I'm a student of history. I have studied revivals across continents. I have studied the history of the church in Nigeria. I've had the honor and the privilege to meet a few people in their lifetime before they transited. I've had the honor to talk with a few revivalists. I know what I am saying. Miracles are not ended. God is still in the business of lifting people. God is still in the business of healing the sick. God is still in the business of raising the dead. God is still in the business of turning lives around. God is still in the business of wiping the tears of day that cry. God is still in the business of supernaturally lifting people and shifting their levels from one dimension to the other. God is a miracle worker and the days of miracles are only beginning, truthfully speaking. He's not changed. For in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6, the A part, it says, For I am the Lord and I change not. I am the Lord and I change not. If I was a miracle worker before, I am still a miracle worker. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. Apostle Paul was teaching and he had this to say about Jesus. That Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, the same today, 
and the same forever. The same yesterday. The healer yesterday. The healer today. The healer forever. The lifter yesterday. The lifter today. And the lifter forever. If you are with me, say amen. Very quickly, what are miracles? We have to understand a bit about the supernatural. This for me, as far as I'm concerned, is a crusade, even though it was intended to be a conference. And so, um, my teaching would be as basic as possible because we have to give room um, for the ministry of the Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. Miracles and the supernatural are the foundations of the Christian faith. You have to understand this. Everything about the faith life from Genesis down to Revelation is a communication of the supernatural and the communication of the miraculous. From Genesis, the first verse, to Revelation, the last verse, it's, it's everything supernatural and everything miraculous. Are we together? Now let me say something very important. God is not a magician. God does not do magic. Magic is a demonic and satanic manipulation of spiritual laws. An attempt to aberrate and copy that which is divine. God does not do magic. God does not work magic. But he is a miracle worker. He's not a magician. There are herbalists who practice magic. There are people all across the world who are experts as far as the manipulation of spiritual laws are concerned. And they seem to have provided a measure and a level of solutions. And so over the years, through their track record, they have been trusted. And sometimes we can bring these people side by side and just conclude that the most important thing is that there is a universal force that empowers them all. God is not a magician, but he is a miracle worker. It's always been God's desire all through scripture to display the supernatural on earth and then in the midst of his people. Every once in a while we see through scripture that there will be a spectacular demonstration of the divine hand of God over the lives and the affairs of men within territories. It will cause men to call upon the name of the Lord again. It will cause men to recognize his all surpassing power above the then kings, above the spiritual forces that attempt to sabotage God's purposes. So God has always intended that his people never forget him as a miracle worker. What are miracles? Let's do a quick definition. Miracles are supernatural occurrences. Miracles are supernatural occurrences that defy the laws of nature. Supernatural occurrences that defy the laws of nature or the usual course of events. Miracles defy the laws of nature and they also defy the usual course of events. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible from the Old Testament down to the life and the ministry of Jesus and then to the ministry of the apostles was full of all kinds of miracles right from creation in Genesis 1 let me run through a few you don't have to write just listen down to Enoch's translation the Bible talks of the miracle of the flood even though historically there are still all kinds of arguments as to whether the flood in the days of Noah really happened but based on the authority of scripture we know that there was such an event it was not a parable there was such an event on earth where the entire earth was flooded with water. The miracle of the donkey speaking in Numbers 22. The burning bush for instance. Moses in the house of Pharaoh advocating the exodus of the nation of Israel. And all the plagues 
that followed until Pharaoh gave in. These are manifestations of the hand and the power of God. We read about the pillar of cloud and fire by day and by night. We read about manna sent from heaven. The Bible records. We read about water from the rock in Rephidim. You find that in Exodus 17. We read about the mysterious and the strange defeat of the enemies of Israel all through scripture. These are examples of miracles. The supernatural division of Jordan, River Jordan. The Bible talks about men who were unusually empowered like Samson, who tore beasts with their bare hands, defeated the Philistines with the jawbone of an ass, removed gates over cities. We read about a man called Elijah the Tishbite who single-handedly shut the heavens and that for a period of three and a half years, there was no rain in that land. Supernatural manifestations of the hand of God. The Bible talks to us about the widow's son who was raised from the dead, fire coming from heaven to consume men. The healing of the waters in Jericho. The Bible talks to us about several other miracles the miraculous restoration of naaman the bible talks about the axe head that had to float against gravity i'm showing you instances from scripture a display of miracles signs and wonders the preservation of jonah in the belly of the fish how could a man be in the belly of the fish for three days defy all the laws of biology and then come out with a message from the belly of the fish. God is a miracle worker. Then we read of the miracles in the ministry of Jesus. John chapter 2 starts by telling us the miracle of the wine in the wedding in Cana. Jesus Christ himself healing the demoniac in the synagogue. Healing Peter's mother-in-law, the drought of fish, and the miracle that followed. The important man who was healed in Jerusalem, John 5. The servant of the centurion. The widow of Nain. Jairus' daughter. These are all supernatural manifestations of the power of God. The feeding of the 5,000 with two loaves and five fish. One of the synoptics record the feeding of the 4,000 also. The transfiguration of Jesus Christ. Money coming out from the mouth of a fish. That means God can go to any length to see to it that they that call upon his name do not suffer shame. May that be a word for someone tonight. In the name of Jesus the Christ of God. All kinds of miracles. Time will fail me to begin to do a comprehensive rundown of these manifestations. The, great of, the greatest of them that we know is the miracle of resurrection where the son of the living God gave himself up and he was locked, the Bible says, and there were servants all around. But at the third day, the Bible says, an angel came, rolled the stone, sat on it. It's not a parable. It actually happened. And the son of the living God, raised up by the spirit of holiness, he rose from the grave without blood in his body. All the blood had been drained and yet he was still alive. What manner of man is Jesus we sing? God is a God of miracles. He appeared to the disciples, admonished them over a period of 40 days, and then levitated right before them into the heavens. They waited 10 more days in fear. Then a supernatural event happened again. God is a God of miracles. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, when you start from verse 1, it says, Now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, that they were gathered together in one accord, then it says, Suddenly a miracle happened. There was a sound like it was in Ezekiel 37, and it came and filled the room. And they saw what looked like cloven tongues as of fire. 
these events actually happened on the earth rested upon each and every one of them they were filled with the holy spirit and that was the beginning of the manifestation of the church supernatural in one day three thousand people came to jesus christ then you read through the book of Acts, the spectacular display of the mighty hand of god how could you say the days of miracles are over the Bible talks about serpents that could not harm the apostles. The Bible talked of people who died and brought themselves back to life. God is a God of miracles. I had the honor and the privilege to have witnessed firsthand the miracle and the ministry of our dearly beloved evangelist Reinhard Bonke. I was right there on that crusade ground. I remember like yesterday. I attended that crusade the first day. I saw spectacular miracles. And by the second day, I made up my mind that I wanted to sow that seed of honor to that man before he would transit in glory. I wheeled people from the wheelchair myself they had stopped me because they said i was not part of the committee i said you're joking you don't know how far i travel to be part of this crusade committee or no committee i must sow that seed of honor and while i was wheeling people from the wheelchair i said lord this is how it will also happen one day in my meeting i am honoring someone you have lifted right before my eyes i saw people stand from wheelchairs right before my eyes like we saw yesterday i saw people lifting crutches and walking and i said what in the world is this god is a miracle worker hebrews chapter 11 is an archive of men and women who walk the earth like gods placing their faith on god almighty and did valiantly on earth here's how the bible puts it that time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak, men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions, women who received their dead back to life. Please shout with me, God is a miracle worker. One more time, just God is a miracle worker. Acts chapter 2 1 verse 22 this was Paul giving his sermon on the day of Pentecost and here's what he said ye men of Israel hear these words Jesus of Nazareth a man approved of God among you not by stories not by parables God approved Jesus he validated that Jesus was actually sent through the spectacular manifestation of miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him not in the absence of you in the midst of you just like it will happen shortly in this place that right in the midst of you the spirit of the living God will be having a holy convocation through this crowd setting the captives free healing the sick and bringing liberty to as many in the name of Jesus Christ God is a miracle worker. In John chapter 2, chapter 20 and verse 21, Jesus is preparing, finalizing his days on earth so he would transit back in glory as the victorious savior and king. And here's what he had to say. Jesus said to them again, peace be unto you. As my father had sent me, Joshua Selman, even so I send you. As my father has sent me, please every man of God hear me. There is a way God sent Jesus. He sent him with an anointing, not just a message. He sent Jesus with a great provable unction. He didn't just send him with a well-meaning, comforting message. He said, as my father had sent me, in that similitude I send you as my father had sent me 
so send I you John chapter 14 John chapter 14 and verse 12 in fact please back up a bit let's go to Matthew Matthew chapter 10 we'll read verse 1 then we'll read verse 7 Matthew chapter 10 this is Jesus test running the disciples who would later become the apostles of the Lamb this was the instruction he gave them verse 1 then we go to 7 and when he had called unto him the 12 disciples listen carefully he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease verse 7 please and he said as ye go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand prove the reality of this message by verse 8 healing the sick cleansing the lepers raising the dead casting out devils these are the proofs that the kingdom has come that if these realities are not true then we have a right to doubt the reality of the kingdom in our midst if it is true that jesus is alive if it is true that he conquered death hell and the grave there must be tokens of that victory and the signs and the wonders that have been experienced in the church and that will be experienced tonight are tokens of that victory it is true that jesus is alive and it is true that god still works miracles the requests that are scattered here in the bowls and on the social media platforms are representations of the pain the ills the concerns of so many across the plateau how would god be such a benevolent father and look down from heaven and watch these sheets representing the the pain of families and then allow us gather like this only to share the grace and return back in misery if you were god you would not respond to such hunger that way i assure you tonight that these egyptians you see you will see them no more forever one more time i prophesy that these egyptians you see over your ministry over your life in the name of jesus you will see them no more forever Please sit down. In John 14 and verse 12, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, this is scripture, the works that I do, shall he also do, and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father Mark 16 from verse 17 Mark 16 from verse 17 and these signs shall follow them that believe if you are a believer please shout I am a believer it said these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils in my name leave that scripture there they shall cast out devils in my name they shall cast out devils whilst I am speaking right now the power of God is touching people I want you to bring them out there are all kinds of demonic cases right now being addressed by the Spirit of God because he said in my name I declare that any spirit that is not on the, of the Christ located within this vicinity in the name of Jesus the Christ of God I come against you now in the name of Jesus help them I come against you now in the name of Jesus I come against you now in the name of Jesus I come against you now don't bring people out at random those under the anointing the power of God is touching people the power of God is touching people just bring those under the anointing in my name they shall cast out devils in my name they shall cast out devils I'm not sure that what's that he's sick what's wrong with him okay I'm going to pray for the sick I'm talking about those who are under the anointing right now as I'm speaking I'm seeing 
what looks like fire. I'm explaining this scripture for you. I'm seeing what looks like fire and it's resting on people from the front to the back. I'm seeing chains even breaking right now as I speak. And I declare in the name of Jesus, my God, please help them. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, those chains be broken right now. Please ushers help them. I'm only talking about those under the anointing. My dear, look at me. Even though I've not started praying for the sick, but since you are out, let me pray for you. Ushers, can you help coordinate the people so that we make sure that only the people that just bring those under the anointing, that's the instruction, please. Someone just help coordinate them. The Lord is setting people free right now. My dear, do you believe in Jesus? Shout Jesus as loud as you can. You. That's not how to shout. Out of her now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the little one is her daughter. Baby, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, every demon and every devil that oppresses you gives way now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In my name. Please keep that scripture. This is not a parable. In my name, they shall cast out devils. We're going to shout that name once whilst we're seated. And as I see four horns, these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah and Jerusalem, so that no man doth lift up his head. He said, But I have sent four carpenters. Again, I decree and declare that every influence around this vicinity that is not the Christ. It comes under judgment right now in the name of Jesus. It comes under judgment right now in the name of Jesus. It comes under judgment right now in the name of Jesus. Please give us that scripture. In my name, they shall cast out devils. In my name, they shall speak with new tongues. Verse 18. In my name, they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them in my name they shall lay hands on the sick they shall lay hands on the sick they shall lay hands on the blind they shall lay hands on cripples they shall lay hands on the deaf they shall lay hands on those with terminal diseases and the Bible says they shall recover. Someone shout, God is a miracle worker. One more time, shout, God is a miracle worker. Now listen please. We're about to pray shortly. I want to explain something very briefly. The dynamics of the supernatural in as much as God is a miracle worker you must understand the spiritual operation of the miraculous but please allow me pray for those in front so that they go and sit in the name of Jesus everyone here in front under any influence that is not of the Christ I come with the rod of a higher priesthood and I command those forces go now 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 out of their lives out of their destinies out of their families in the name of Jesus everything stolen be recovered now in the name of Jesus Christ for the Bible declares where the Spirit of the Lord is there is liberty we enforce liberty blotting out every handwriting the Bible says and every ordinance that spoke against us he nailed it to his cross every legal access upon which the devil lays claim on your life and family i declare you are free right now in the name of jesus you are free right now in the name of jesus you are free right now in the name of jesus father this ones who have come out in a name that is above all names for them and for their families they will never return to this again 
we build a spiritual fortification around your life you will never forget this crusade in the name of Jesus everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you hallelujah praise the lord in the name of jesus christ now for those who are fine they can return back to their seat let me touch on this very quickly hallelujah There is, now I don't know how we're going to do this now, my God. There is someone at the back. You came with a crutch. Lift that crutch up and walk. Now, please. Lift your crutch and walk now. In the name of Jesus. Look at it. Lift your crutch. Walk. 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 Lift your crutch and walk. Look at this. A miracle has happened there. My God. Joss, is this how you celebrate the miracle walking God? The Lord is showing me another person. You came, I don't know, there is, if it's a crutch or something that is assisting you, like an aid. Right now, the power of God is touching you. I'm going to pray for the sick, but this is just an instruction God is giving me. Whoever that person is, don't be afraid. Lift it up and walk. Lift it up and walk. Lift it up and walk. Don't be afraid. Lift it up and walk. I don't know if there's someone like that. Lift it up and walk. We'll be seated shortly. The devil is a liar. Lift it up and walk. My dear, look at me. How long have you been with this? This is seven months. There's a miracle happening somewhere. Celebrate Jesus. Please guide them, those who, if there's someone like that and God is doing a miracle, let's. Someone, a wheelchair. There's a miracle there. Hallelujah. Give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise, Joss. Is this how you celebrate miracles? We are here for you come and do what you do we are here for you come and do what celebrate jesus Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, let me have a mic, please. I want to talk to this lady. Another miracle is happening somewhere. Please hold on. Be careful with them so that they don't enjoy it. Look at the lady. My dear, look at me. Hold on. Who brought this lady? How long has it been? For the past eight years. For the past eight years. Hold on, please. Is this mic working? Please help us. She was diagnosed of kidney failure September last Kidney year. failure? Yes, September, September last year. My sister, shot. look at me. In the name of Jesus, walk. Come. 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 Careful with her so she doesn't fall. I command that devil out of her now. In the name of Jesus. 
Are you celebrating miracles? Please just help her. Let her get somewhere and sit down. Let me talk with this lady. What's your name, my dear? Please, someone manage them just as we celebrate miracles. Just give them somewhere to sit so they are not stressed. Yes, please. Someone, a crutch, someone has been healed right now. Please lift your voice and begin to pray. Everything that must change, let it change in my life right now. God is already touching people. Are you praying? Someone is praying. Hallelujah. Please. Hallelujah. Look at me. Mama, be careful. Don't stretch yourself. How long has this been? Who is with the mic? Okay. It's eight years now. How many years? Eight years. Eight years. Eight years. You live in just here? Yes, sir. What's your name, Ma? My name is Stella. Stella? Nash. From Stel from where, Ma? What area? Tudunwada. Tudunwada? Yes, sir. You believe in miracles? Mm -hmm. Place your hand there. Father, in the name of Jesus, perfect this woman right now. The power of the Holy Ghost is touching you. Now. Now. In the name of Jesus, help her. The power of God is coming upon her. Just keep her down there. In the name of Jesus, let it be over forever. Let me talk with this girl. What's your name, my dear? My name is Gloria. From where? From Bukuru. How long has this been? Since August last year. August last year? Yes, sir. You had to use the crutch? Yes, sir. How were you walking before? Let me see. Use the crutch. Let me just see how you were walking with the crutch. This is how you used to walk. When you came here, was this how you were walking? Now lift it and walk. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the Lord perfects you right now. In the name of Jesus. We'll be praying for the sick shortly. This was just an instruction that God gave me. Please let them find somewhere to sit. But before we sit, there is someone you came here... Is this my left or right? This is left. Your left ear, you could not hear with it. You couldn't hear with it. Check yourself now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Check it right now. You check it, you find out that a miracle just happened. A miracle just happened. A miracle just happened. I rebuke deafness of all sorts. In the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus. Deafness of all sorts. In the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus, let there be a supernatural miracle for you. In Jesus' name. Can we finish up what we are teaching before we pray? Please sit, please sit, please sit. God is doing mighty things in this place. Praise the Lord. Now let me explain something very quickly and then we will pray. For a very long time, Believers have found the subject of the miraculous mysterious. I want to explain something, please. And respectfully speaking, if you're a minister of the gospel here, you may want to listen because I found it strange for many years why even though we read from scripture that miracles should be a common occurrence of believers, more so servants of God. But the reason why we do not see these experiences um, and then I got to a point where what's that what's happening what is that please please ushers make sure you verify whatever it is what, what's that what happened oh the ears have opened my god my friend Look at me. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. What's your name? Huh? Israel. Israel. Yes. What's your name, sir? How long have you had this? Since I was born. Since you were born? 
Is this how you celebrate miracle in Joss? Amazing. Oh, this lady, her ears open too. Look at this. Look at this. Stand up. My friend, where is the gentleman? Stand up. From the day you were born. Close the ear. Come. Oh dear. Just put the mic close to him. Just turn. Don't look at me. Just say what you think I'm saying. Hallelujah. Give Jesus praise. My friend, look at me. You believe in miracles now? Yes, sir. Because um, you love Jesus? Yes, sir. I do. I'll pray for you. It's not enough to receive miracles. You must be empowered to go and represent the same. My friend, look at me. How long? What's your name? My name is Israel. Israel, how long have you had this? I've been since 2006. 2006? How many years is that? More than almost 15. 15 years. Which of the ear? The left. The left. Put your hand there. My dear, what's your name? Favor. Favor. How long has this been? Last year. Last year. What happened? Last year. Just like that? Yes. This is how you know that this is the devil. Why will you have God give you ears and for no reason it just stops? Was this verified medically? You went to the hospital. Yeah. Which hospital? Jordan Air Force. Air Force. Where is it? Okay, there's a hospital like that. I'm so sorry. The reason why we do this is because, I guess because of some of these things that happen around any spectacular manifestation, people think it's stage managed. So sometimes it's forced us to have to go out of our way. Not everybody is fake. -o. There are people who have paid their price in God. Genuinely and they carry genuine grace. I think I, I need to say this. Praise the name of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, perfection. This miracle you have done in their lives, it remains so. My God, we will so celebrate miracles this night. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by the Spirit of grace, it will never return to you again. In Jesus' name, celebrate them as they return back to their seat. praise the Lord. Now, please listen. I'm about to share something very important. We've had an age-old controversy, especially in the body of Christ. And there's been, as far as manifesting the supernatural is concerned, and I just want to place a balance to this. We've had people who believe in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And they may not place that much value on the word of God. For instance, we can just be singing here and then miracles begin to happen. And so there are people who have obtained results that way and they downplay the necessity of the word and of scripture. They believe that the singular factor responsible for the miraculous is the Holy Spirit. And then there are others who believe that it is just the word of God if the word of God is not here that you cannot receive so there's been a controversy between those who are in quote the spirit people and those who are the word people this has been so for ages both of them are right but both of them are incomplete the ministry of the word and the spirit is not a choice for you to choose one they go together and I want to explain to you the roles that they play as far as the manifestation of spiritual reality is concerned. The Bible never said in the beginning was the spirit. It says in the beginning was the word. So we understand that in order of precedence, it is the word of God. Listen to me. The word of God defines the jurisdiction and the boundary of his commitment in the life of a believer. God cannot be committed to a believer outside of the jurisdiction of scripture. You have to understand this. The word of God defines the coordinates of God's commitment. Every time your demand or your action is out of the provisions allowed from scripture, God loves you, but you cannot secure his attention nor his commitment. You have to understand this. The assignment of the spirit 
through the anointing is to give credence and performance to the word please understand this the holy spirit shows up through his anointing to honor the word that is spoken that means if the word for healing goes forth listen carefully that jesus said in my name the sick will be healed because that word has been proclaimed and the word has been honored the assignment of the holy spirit is to ensure that the healing anointing is sufficiently experienced to make sure the anointing has the assignment of validating the word the assignment of the anointing is to ensure that god does not look like a liar so the anointing has no assignment when the word has not been proclaimed because the assignment of the anointing the anointing gives credence to the word are we together now yes so if i say blind eyes be open that is a word that came from the lord it is the anointing that goes forth from the spirit and brings performance to that word so when we celebrate open eyes then it is proven now experientially that God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. So the idea of emphasizing the spirit as against the word or the word as against the spirit is unnecessary. It's like foil and a car. The assignment of the foil is to make sure that the car moves to its designated place. But foil in a jerry can in itself is not useful the value of that foil is when it functions in a car are you getting what i'm saying now the word of god is like that car and the anointing is like the foil if you have the car alone even if it is a a latest whatever it is of a car if it does not have the foil it will be there but not be able to do much so if all you have is word 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 with no spirit you will keep speaking a lot of theological dissertations with no grace for performance. And if all you have is spirit, 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 you will not know when you have delved into occultism because the word of God that creates the boundary is not there. The realm of the spirit is a vast realm and the Holy Spirit is not the only spirit there. So the word of God gives you balance. I don't know if God has helped somebody this night. Yes. So when we celebrate the manifested presence of God, when we celebrate his anointing, it is because the factor that confirms the word is there. Now we can speak boldly, knowing that the grace that makes for performance is there. All of the people who God healed here, they came sick and even though I was preaching and what I was saying was the word of God they still were not healed until the word for their healing so the Holy Ghost will keep hovering his assignment is to confirm the word spoken not the word available the word spoken the word declared not the word available the word spoken and God said light be and there was and God said light be and there was are we blessed now yes now believers listen please we have a participatory role to play as far as the manifestation of the supernatural and the miraculous is concerned I must quickly say this there's been a narrative for a very long time that believers do not have any role to play if God wants to heal me he will heal me we say that's a very well-intentioned statement but it is not accurate are we together now yes oftentimes we'll see in scripture jesus telling sick people what do you desire that i do for you even when he met obvious situations you would think when he met blind Bartimeo on his way going out of jericho and he called upon him thou son of david have mercy upon me you would think it would be obvious that he needed healing from his blind eyes if you understand the way God works, you will know the kind of respect he has for the will of man. God will not assume that you need healing. He respects your will that much. Even at the detriment of your eternal destiny, he still allows you to make a choice. 
there are people going to hell today even though the victory of Christ over sin over death over Satan is a reality are we together the Bible says let the redeemed of the Lord say so you must verbalize your commitment in fact here's how it puts it it says be anxious for nothing but it says in everything by prayer and supplication even through, with thanksgiving make your request known don't assume God knows it make your request known and so this request that we have is an honor to that scripture make your request known let the Lord know you need healing let him know that you need to step into new levels let him know you are tired of your current level don't say God you are watching me and doing nothing you have to make your request known hear me the name given to your participatory role as far as the manifestation of the miraculous is concerned is called faith faith i did explain i think in one of the sessions was it the first or the morning service yesterday how that faith is more than believing for a very long time we call believing faith believing is part of the equation believing has to do with conviction you're agreeing with god but that is not enough to the faith equation faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction on who god is and the integrity of his word the name given to the action not just the declaration not just the believing believing comes from the word pistis and it's not enough it has to be action i demonstrated it here yesterday many people continue to believe as we call it and we believe in definitely without a manifestation there has to be an action of obedience Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 it shall come to pass the Bible declares if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day then you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you Joshua 1 verse 8 it says this book of the Lord shall not depart from out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do not just to say not just to wish to do according to all that is written therein then and only then shall thou make your way prosperous and then you shall have good success are we together so faith very important theologically speaking there are three places in scripture where you will hear the statement your faith has made you whole the first is in Matthew chapter 9 from verse 20 to 22. This was the narrative of the woman with the issue of blood. The Bible lets us know that this woman said to herself, watch her act of faith now. She had spent money, the Bible says, on physicians, doctors, and she could not become better. Hearing and seeing Jesus pass, she said to herself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole if she just stopped at saying she would remain in that issue forever she had to take that step it was a risk and when she touched Jesus the Bible says that she touched the hem of his garment verse 21 please it says for she said within herself if I may but touch the hem of his garment I shall be made whole 22 it says Jesus turned him about and when he saw her he said daughter be of good comfort your faith what faith the summation of everything you did as touching your confidence in me your contemplation your speaking backed up by your action called faith this is what made you whole not your speaking alone not your wishing to be healed alone from your wishing your desire because the bible says what things soever ye desire so it starts with desire when ye pray, it says, believe that thou receivest it and thou shalt have it. Your desire, the confession, the action of faith that you take. All together, the Bible calls it faith. It says that's what played to bring your healing. Are we together? Second story that proves that faith is important as far as the manifestation of the God of miracles is in Luke chapter 17. It's a long reading, but we may not read it for time's sake from verse 11 to 9 the story of the 10 lepers the bible says that jesus was passing and there were 10 lepers desiring to be healed he told them get up prove that you believe me by taking that risk 
go and show yourself to the priest the bible says whilst they went not whilst they spoke not whilst they taught they had to stand up and take actions of obedience and whilst they went they discovered that they were cleansed and the bible says one returned and gave thanks etc but the, the message is that they had to get up and move they had to get up and take action last scripture Math, Mark chapter 10 from verse 46 to 52 long reading again just write it for reference the Bible talks about a blind man who was healed he saw blind Bartimeo the son of Timio he sat by the highway begging you're tempting me to read and finish that scripture well let's read we've started and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth so he started with his hearing faith cometh by hearing the Bible says he began to cry out and say so we see that it moved from hearing to his saying verbalizing his intent thou son of David have mercy on me 48 we're reading to 52 and many charged him that he should hold his peace that means distractions are not unusual when you are manifesting faith there were people who tried to shut him down but he cried the more thou son of David have mercy on me next verse please and Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called and when they call the blind man when they call the blind man the Bible recognizes his blindness Jesus said unto him be of good cheer rise he called you okay they, he was asked and then he casted away his garment and what rose he would have sat there and said I don't need to stand all I need is healing in my eyes he would have remained there he had to take that step even though blind at the instance of the word he took that step and the Bible calls it faith 51 Jesus answered and said unto him seems like a silly question but this is the extent to which God has regard for the will of man what will thou that I should do unto thee and the man politely answered the blind man that I may receive my sight tonight don't just say God help me it looks like a good prayer but the Bible says give us this day our daily bread you have to mention what you desire don't just say, Lord, just help me, my life. I don't even understand what is happening. Whatever you can do is a very well-meaning, well-intentioned communication, but there is no faith there. Give us this day, and you mention what you want, our daily bread. Are we together? And Jesus said to him, go thy way, thy faith. Uh -huh. Here you find it again. Thy faith had made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Let me wrap up this brief teaching session by sharing what I think is most important, seldom forgotten when we are dealing with the subject of miracle signs and wonders. What is the purpose of miracles? why does god reveal himself as a miracle working god god is a god of purpose he does nothing just for the fun of it we have to learn to discern miracles if we do not discern the purpose and the intent of miracles then it is usually very difficult for christ to be glorified in the midst of miracles number one there are two biblical reasons why miracles happen number one to reveal the love of the father the first assignment of the miraculous is to demonstrate practically that god's communication about his love for his people is not a lie is not a scam john 3 16 the character of love is that it always gives for god so loved the world that he gave not just desired he gave if it is true that god is a loving god it must be demonstrated in the extent of his benevolence our confidence as we receive is that the fatherhood of God is still in place in our lives you must be ever conscious of the fatherhood of God he said which of you being evil which of you will your son ask for bread and you give him a stone ask for meat fish and you give him a serpent he said if you being evil even though you are evil you have that sense of empathy how much more will your heavenly father 
give good gifts other versions say the holy ghost god is a giver please say after me god is a giver the reason why we are receivers is because he is a giver the revelation of the love of god first john chapter 4 from verse 8 apostle john was teaching and admonishing us first john 4 and verse 8 the bible says that he that does not love does not know god for god is love god does not have love god is love so when he demonstrates miracles signs and wonders there is a message behind the blind eye opening there is a message behind the cripple walking listen carefully there is a message behind the demonic being delivered there is a message behind one who is poor sitting on the ground being lifted overnight to the place of princes every supernatural manifestation of god has a message the miracle is for you but the message is what helps you to see the intent of god in it most times we celebrate the miracles we even celebrate the man who god used the vessel but we do not discern the message behind miracles. So from tonight, when you experience miracles, don't just celebrate and dance and say, God is good, he's done me well. Discern the message. Behind every miracle that has happened, that will happen this night and the days that follow, there is a message. Do not enjoy the miracle alone. Make sure you are discerning enough to see the message that is back of it someone shout amen hallelujah number two why does god reveal himself as the god of miracles what is the purpose of the supernatural and the miraculous to show and reveal his might and his power to show and to reveal his might and his power drawing men to salvation and causing men to honor him you have to understand this god works miracles he reveals himself as a god of miracles to show to reveal his might and his power drawing men to salvation and causing men to honor him there's a long reading when you read daniel chapter 3 for reference from verse 1 to 30 is a long reading you read about the event that happened in Babylon when a 90 feet stature of gold a man who decided that he had been so exalted he will be God and he built a stature that at the sound of musical instruments the timbrel etc that everyone would bow and the Bible says there were three Hebrew boys Shadrach Meshach and Abednego who although they had the fortitude to honor the king they made up their mind that on that matter on the matter of idolatry they would not bow the consequence is that the fire was made seven times hotter and they were thrown into the fire but a miracle happened there that as soon as they got into that fire the chains and everything melted away like wax before the fire and they saw one in their midst who was like the son of god in the end of it let's look at daniel chapter 3 i hope i'm right verse um at least let's look at 27 maybe the last three verses daniel chapter 3 the bible says and the princes look up governors and captains the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power ah, powerful statement the fire so there are some bodies on earth that fire has no power over there are bodies there are families a body does not just mean a human body a ministry can be a body a business can be a body there are bodies that orchestrations of darkness has no authority reminds me what jesus said nothing shall by any means hurt you nor was the hair of their hair seen neither was their coat changed nor the smell of fire had passed on them a decree was passed as a result nebuchadnezzar spake and said as a result the purpose of miracles blessed be the god of shadrach 
Meshach and Abednego. I do not know his name, but I will name him after those who know him. When God works a miracle in your life, that testimony can give God a name through your life. Why do you think he's called the God of Abraham? Then the God of Isaac. Your assignment is to spend your lifetime giving God a new name by the spectacular manifestation of the wonders that he works through your life. That you should not depart from earth and all they know is that he's the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Something about your experience with God should give him a name. Please keep that scripture. We're wrapping up. The Bible says, Who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and has changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve or worship any god except their own god. Very interesting. Two more verses. 29. Therefore, someone because of what God is doing in your life, what had been the prior decrees about to be changed tonight? In the name of Jesus. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, every nation, every language which speak anything amiss against the God of this gentleman shall be cut in pieces and their houses be made a dunghill because, hallelujah, there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. There is a way God does miracles. He does it the way Julius Berger builds roads or most of the construction companies. How many of you have seen a standard construction company building a road or doing some kind of architectural work? They do it in a way that you know is them. They leave a little signature. If Julius Berger builds you a place, you will see a little symbol B so that you do not confuse. Don't give the credit to the wrong people. So there is a way other gods heal. There is a way other gods change lives. But there is a way my God and your God does it. He does it in a way that everybody knows that this one, it was El Shaddai that lifted you. It was El Shaddai that gave you a new song. My Bible says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. As a result of this, the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. We discern miracles when we see the love of Jesus revealed through them. We discern miracles when we see the might of God revealed through them. I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and its riders have been drawn into the sea. That was the song of Miriam when they saw the matchless hand of God. Listen to me. I am a recipient of miracles myself. Right in this city, I was diagnosed of situations that only God would do a miracle for me. I remember it today like it happened yesterday. A mysterious infection that I could not explain wanted to eat up my head completely. Every kind of medical consultation failed right in this city. Medical experts I remember the pain of taking samples of the injuries. I remember being in the lab and having several lab attendants do their best. I remember they came up with a lotion. They came up with soap to help me. And it would it was, just, it was like this thing would not... It was a miracle that hair would still grow on my head. God is a God of miracles. Listen. It's one thing to preach what you read in the Bible. It's another thing to preach what has happened in your life. 
Sometimes God allows us to go through certain things so we can have sufficient compassion to administer that dimension of grace. Some of us are too innocent. We are too separated from what we are helping people from. That's why the compassion to insist until they are healed, until they are delivered. I remember that night. I went to bed and I woke up in the morning and there was a miracle supernatural miracles I'm not exaggerating more than 70% of the wounds had disappeared what is this I had read watch videos but this is happening to me not some person in the US I have been a benefactor of the miraculous I remember a time in my life I couldn't look at this light you see if I looked at it for over five minutes my eyes would burn burn literally I remember talking with a consultant who had done everything written a focal length of the you know glasses that would be made and all of that and I said Lord I don't have a problem with this but I'm a young man and I have I didn't even know that I had the call of God upon my life but I just knew there was something burning in me. Please listen carefully. I remember watching Benny Hinn. He was ministering. And I got down on my knees with childlike faith. I said, Lord, I don't know this man, but I believe him. And suddenly he said, there's a young man you're watching from Africa. And there's a problem with your eyes. Light, not vision, physically from the television came and entered my eyes. Till today, I have 2020 vision. I know what it means to be a benefactor and a recipient of miracles. We're about to pray, but I cannot end without telling you my story. I began my pursuit for God, loving Him, but I had a dissatisfaction in my heart. I listened to sermons, I went to churches, I saw well meaning people loving the Lord. But I saw the sick remaining sick. I saw oppressed people remaining oppressed. We sang hymns. We sang songs that communicated the power of God. And I read those hymns. Powerful hymns that talked about the mighty hand of God. Hymns like up from the grave he arose. With the mighty triumph on his hands. He arose the victor. I, I read those hymns and I said, no, 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 something is wrong. I had powerful messages. And in the midst of those messages, I saw people who I knew were oppressed. I said, there has to be something more than this. We're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. It's got to be, it's got to be more, it's got to be more. It's gotta be more than this. For desperate people do desperate things, and we're pressing in. It's gotta be more. It's gotta be more. It's gotta be more than this. Listen. When the Lord called me to ministry, I said, Lord, please, I cannot stand before your people. And keep advocating truths that I cannot defend. I do not want to tell people things that I will go back to the room and say, did I lie? I didn't want to advocate dimensions that could not be defended. My hunger, first for God and for his genuine fire reached the heavens. Days became weeks. Weeks became months. Months became years. There is a way you desire God that you know if you do not find him, you will die. I'm not talking of looking for God for a sermon. I'm not talking for, about looking for him for money and cars and houses. There is a law that governs encounters. When you seek him with all your heart, you will truly find him. Please listen to my story. One night, I was lying down quietly 
minding my business and a spectacular miracle happened all of a sudden from a direction I could not explain here he walked into my room his majesty my desire of years the one who preacher spoke about Jesus was standing right before me the one who died that Nazarene I could look at any part of his body forever and not be tired brilliance I'm telling you I still do not know how his face looks like I was like a speck of dust on the floor I didn't know how do I start worshipping this man do I bow down do I kneel down do I sing him a song what do I offer such an august visitor please listen to me because some of you are in a phase where you are about to have such encounters he never spoke a word to me all he did was to stretch his right hand towards me and light imagine carrying the sun help those under the anointing please light from him is like taking the sun and putting it inside an ant how I did not die is something I will ask him when we get to heaven I have seen the one we talk about let me tell you this the first time I saw Jesus I knew that many people do not know him no 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 you know today people say they saw Jesus it's not for me to argue with anyone but if it's the Jesus I saw that you saw, you will never be the same. No matter whether you believe it or not. Read your Bible and see what happened to people when they met him. It took me more than one year to recover from that encounter. He stretched his hands and light came. Now watch this. He didn't have to open his mouth. Yet he was talking to me. That was the first time I discovered... That the language of God is not Hebrew. The language of God is not Greek. The language of God is not Hausa. It's not English. The language of God is light. The entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding to the simple. Listen to me. After that encounter, I opened my Bible and I could not believe again. It was like a straight line was drawn from Genesis to Revelation. I started knowing things I did not remember studying them. Where is this revelation coming from? In another encounter, listen to me. I was standing and I saw a crowd of people like this. It was a whole generation of people. And they were crying and saying there is no food and there is no water. I said, who is the cause? And they pointed to me. I said, no, 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 I can't do this. Why will I deprive you of food and water? But I was afraid because in that vision, it's like there were people who were following me to persecute me. And I was afraid. But I made up my mind. I said, if I perish, I perish. As soon as I opened the door, I saw a giant gray-headed man that I now know to be a similitude of the Holy Spirit. He said, give me your hands. I will walk with you. And he held me. And that began the ministry of the spirit that you now see today. Sometimes it's important that we explain this. It's, please don't misunderstand me. This is not a show of pride at all. I was praying one night. And I was caught up to the realm of the spirit. Please help them. And then... The Lord spoke to me and said, Son, from this day, I give you my manifest presence as a gift. I didn't even understand what he was saying. What is the meaning of this? All of a sudden, I see this angel stand before me. And he said, this angel will walk with you across every nation and every place. And he said, his name is the angel of the Lord's presence. I said, is that not supposed to be God himself? And this is why many times you see some of the manifestations that you see. But here's why I said all these stories. 
the Lord gave me an assignment and he said every city every nation and every continent that I will send you to now be sensitive please that in that congregation there will always be a group of people that the light that came from me to you you must transfer part of that light to them I have not failed in this assignment once this is why you heard me pleading with you and say please help them you see what is happening my God yeah na 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 yeah na 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 yeah dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos. Kata Branda Katapa Kotos Koto Breka Teka Nekata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.